Adjustable single bladed safety razors. What are they? How do they work? And how to use them properly? There are only a few choices for adjustable safety razors. The two razors on the left are vintage models no longer produced, but still occasionally found at antique stores and on internet auction websites. The three models on the right are of very different designs, but all produced by the same company. I've previously made the comparison that a modern cartridge razor is like a highway cruiser with an automatic transmission and a single bladed safety razor is like a fun little sports car with a manual transmission. If that's the case, maybe an adjustable safety razor is like a transformer having the ability to adapt to different situations. It does this by changing the distance between the blade and the safety bar on the razor. Changing the blade exposure to a smaller distance can make the razor more gentle, while increasing the blade exposure can give you a more aggressive shave. Even though these razors operate on the same general principle, their internal mechanics are all very different. So each of these razors have very different individual characteristics. This is the Gillette Adjustable, otherwise known as the Fat Boy. This razor's heyday was in the late 50s to early 60s. Similar models include the Slim and the Toggle. All these razors are completely metal. Later, plastic parts were introduced until they were finally phased out in the late 70s. As adjustable razors go, Gillette adjustables are relatively gentle and have a fairly narrow range of settings going from less mild to more mild. If you use one of these razors, be sure to loosen the twist to open knob slightly before adjusting the razor. This is the Schick Injector Adjustable. These razors are mostly plastic and come from the Far East. Regular production ceased several years ago, but occasionally reappear for a short time. This is the Mercur Progress. It's the least expensive of the Mercur adjustable razors and mechanically the simplest. That mechanical simplicity makes it a pretty rugged razor, but it also gives the Progress a few quirks to remember. The Progress is a two-piece razor, very similar in construction to Mercure's fixed head razors. In this case, the adjustment knob of the Progress also serves as the way to remove the top part of the razor head for blade replacement. If you look at the razor's head, you'll notice that one side of each part has a small notch. The notch on each part of the head must be on the same side for the adjustment scale to operate correctly. Even though the Progress's adjustment scale is fairly small, its range of adjustment is actually pretty wide. Finally, the Progress's scale, unlike other adjustable razors, is not standardized. That is, setting number 2 on one progress may not be exactly the same adjustment as setting number 2 on another progress. Another quirk of the progress is the way it holds the blade. While many other razors keep the blade perpendicular to the handle, the progress bends the blade quite dramatically. This means that the angle at which you hold the razor to the skin will be considerably shallower than other razors. By the way, the Progress is my personal everyday razor. Now, I'm not endorsing it, but you're going to have to pry it out of my cold, dead fingers. Here we have the Mercur Future. This is the mid-priced model of the Mercur Adjustables. As you can see, it's much larger and heavier compared to the Progress. The Future's blade adjustment knob is just under the razor head. And speaking of the razor head, the Future sports a somewhat unusual way of replacing blades. One side of the razor head has a little overhang that you place your thumb on to pop off the top. Some users don't care for this design, believing it to be less safe, as the blade could nick the thumb. 
Most users don't seem to have a problem with it, however. Finally, we have Mercure's most expensive, most mechanically complex adjustable razor, the Vision. There are two knobs on the Vision. The lower knob opens and closes the razor, while the upper knob adjusts the exposure, much like the vintage Gillette adjustables. But this is a monster of a razor, with a large head that can make maneuvering around small areas like under the nose difficult, and an adjustment range that's biased a little towards the aggressive side. While new safety razor shavers can usually succeed with other adjustable razors, the Vision is generally regarded as a razor for the more seasoned user. Now that you've learned all about these razors, how do you use them? Well, as you might imagine, there are several different ways you can use an adjustable razor. Probably the simplest way to use an adjustable razor is to simply set it and forget it. So maybe you found that this razor is too rough on your face and this razor is too gentle on your face. Well, now you can have something that's just right. Another way to use an adjustable razor is to shave your first pass at a relatively mild setting, then dial up and repeat the first pass. While it may seem counterintuitive, it works particularly well with heavy stubble. This way you can shave in a comfortable direction and still get a significant amount of beard reduction. Some can even dial up a bit more on successive passes as well. Some adjustable users find it useful to dial down to a milder setting in conjunction with advanced shave techniques like J-hooking and blade buffing when they're doing their final touch-up shave. Adjustable razors are also useful for taming very sharp blades, such as the feather blade, for a more comfortable shave. However, an adjustable razor can't compensate for a dull blade. By the way, for the first few weeks of using an adjustable razor, try not to go above half scale. Going more than that before you're ready will inevitably result in irritation or a nick or cut. Adjustable razors, although not required and not for everyone, can provide a new dimension to shaving for the traditional wet shaver.